We've previously seen that diagonal matrices are really, really nice, that it makes a whole wide range of linear algebra problems really trivial and easy to solve if it's diagonal. But diagonal matrices are relatively rare. Most matrices you're ever going to encounter are not diagonal. So what can we do in that case? Now, we've also seen that if you have two matrices, and they have the property of being similar matrices, that a lot of the properties are going to be similar. For instance, that the eigenvalues of two similar matrices are going to be the same, although admittedly the eigenvectors will differ. So how about this for a process? If I start with the matrix A, I want to find a diagonal matrix D where the A and the D are similar. And then the hope is going to be that I'll do all my computations on the diagonal matrix, because diagonal matrices are really nice and you can do computations easily on them. And then for the original matrix A, you can use the property of similarity to translate this information from the easy diagonal case to the complicated matrix A case. Now, it turns out that you can't always do this. You can't always find a diagonal matrix that's similar to any given matrix. However, you can find it quite often, and I'll tell you exactly when. So my setup is this. Suppose that you have n different eigenvectors for an n by n matrix. So in other words, I am going to let some vectors v1 down to vn. And they're not just n different eigenvectors, they're n different linearly independent eigenvectors for a matrix A. So I'm going to assert that these are going to be linearly independent eigenvectors for a matrix A. And that associated to these n different eigenvectors are going to be n different eigenvalues. So they are going to have lambda 1 all the way down to lambda n, and, and I mean them to be associated in this way, the, the first eigenvector gets the eigenvalue lambda 1 and so on. With lambda 1 down to lambda n, they are going to be eigenvalues. Now, what I'm aiming to do here is I'm, I'm aiming to find two different matrices. In my formula, I want to figure out a P matrix, and I want to figure out a D matrix. And if I have that P matrix, then I can figure out what P inverse is going to be. Now, notice, of course, that not all matrices are going to be invertible. And that's going to be related to this problem. I've asked for n linearly independent eigenvectors for A. And the reason is, if you've got n literally independent eigenvectors, I can put them into the columns of a matrix that will be invertible, a matrix where I'll be able to figure out what its inverse is going to be. So that's going to be my process. I am going to set the matrix P to be the matrix whose columns are these eigenvectors. So it's a matrix, and it has columns the V1 all the way down to the Vn. And then I'm going to note that this P matrix, whose columns are all the eigenvectors, that is going to be invertible precisely when all of those eigenvectors are linearly independent. Indeed, if you have linearly independent columns, you have an invertible matrix. If you don't have an invertible matrix, you have linearly dependent columns. So before we get to the diagonal matrix, let me do part of this manipulation. Let me come and try and compute what A times P is going to be. So I've got my matrix A, and I'm multiplying it by whatever P is. And then we know how matrix times matrix multiplication works. That this is the same thing as the matrix whose first column is going to be A whatever the first column of P is, so A times V1 all the way down to A times Vn. Indeed, this was the definition of matrix-matrix multiplication. But we know what A does to an eigenvector. It just spits out the eigenvalue multiplied by that eigenvector. In other words, this matrix, the first column, the AV1, is just going to become the lambda 1 V1. In other words, the eigenvalue associated with 
the eigenvector v1, all the way down to lambda n vn. Now, compare what we have here with the following. I claim that this is the same thing as taking that matrix, the v1 down to the vn, the p matrix, and multiplying it by something kind of special, a diagonal matrix that has the eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, all the way down to lambda n along the main diagonal, and then has zeros everywhere else. And my claim is that this matrix here is going to be our diagonal matrix. To verify that this really is an equality, let's focus in on the first column. And the, the first column is done by taking the matrix A and multiplying it by whatever the first column is of this matrix D, which is lambda 1 at the top and then all zeros beneath it. So when you do that multiplication all the way through, then what you're just going to get is lambda 1 times v1. We get precisely what we have. So I believe that indeed this is an equality. Now, let me go back to my formula. What we're, we're trying to find is a scenario where the A is going to be equal to P D P inverse. And one of the things that I can do is I could rearrange this as A P is equal to P D. But that is precisely what I've just computed down here. What I've computed down here is the matrix P times D, and I said all the way back at the beginning that that was equal to A times P. So we have figured out a diagonal matrix D, an invertible matrix P, and it obeys this formula that AP equals PD, or alternatively, it obeys the formula that A is equal to PD, P inverse. That is, if we can find this, this linearly independent list of eigenvectors, that's the key task, and I find these linearly independent eigenvectors, then there's a diagonal matrix, and it's the diagonal matrix whose main diagonal just consists of those eigenvalues in that specific order.